My name is Ruthie Ackerman. I'm a freelance reporter and I'm a senior fellow at the World Policy Institute. And I had planned on going to Saudi Arabia for this trip and very last minute because of some visa troubles ended up in Lebanon. So I hadn't done a lot of, um, I didn't have time to do a lot of research beforehand, but ended up kind of being thrown into this country with an overwhelming amount of stories, which was a really good thing. So not quite what I expected, but at the same time was able to make the best of it. So I had gone to, to Lebanon to look at how young people are using the internet to push for social and political change. And one of the first stories I came across was this a Facebook group that this young man, the 22 year old named Naji Raji had started called Save Beirut Heritage. And it's all about how a lot of people are being kicked out of their houses, a lot of families um, are being kicked out of their houses after the war. And these are very beautiful old Ottoman and French architecture houses that obviously have been in the family for a lot of years. and. Um, have a lot of sentimental value. One of the major um, the major criticisms is that the city center itself, which is where a lot of the old buildings are, which was destroyed by the war, is being rebuilt with a lot of these, um, uh, not thinking about the heritage of the city and of the people. And so that's what a lot of people are upset about is the city center itself and then some of the surrounding areas which are also harder hit in Beirut. Families are realizing that they can make a lot of money off of these buildings if they, they sell them to developers. So even some families that own the beautiful old buildings are themselves damaging them so they could be taken off the protected list that um, the Minister of Culture made this protected list. And so the families themselves are tearing down the buildings. They could be taken off the protected list and so they can sell them to developers. And so even sometimes within one family, you know, one person wants to save the building because it's their, in, you know, their great grandfathers and so another person in the family wants to tear it down. And one of the interesting things in Lebanon is that there's so many owners of buildings that it's hard to figure out who actually owns the building and, and you know who should get shares in it. It's been a very interesting process that actually has taken the developing companies over a decade to try to even figure out who's the, who the owners are. A lot of the young people are the ones focusing on this issue right now because of the fact that they feel that they didn't necessarily, you know, that they were born just after the war ended. They didn't know what life was like before, but they heard the stories from their parents and their grandparents. And then, that, but the city itself, all they see is, you know, is the, is the bullet hole, the buildings with the bullet holes and bombed out buildings, but they d can't appreciate that heritage that their grandparents and their parents have told them about. So the one way that they could appreciate it would be to have these, these buildings with the beautiful architectural heritage, um, and now they're being torn down as well. So they really feel like their, um, you know, their, who they are, their identity is being torn down, and they don't know what they're gonna have left to pass down to their children. And so there was a big march on um, one of the Saturdays that I was in Lebanon, which I attended, where hundreds of people marched through the streets of Jamezi, which is this very beautiful area in Beirut. And so I attended that march, and from there um, began interviewing people that owned some of these beautiful mansions. I interviewed um, the one of the urban developers that works for Solidaire, the big company that is actually doing a lot of the tearing down of the old buildings and rebuilding these big, massive towers. And so I was able to get um, like interviews with all sides of the story and really form this, um, what I thought was a more nuanced look at, um, at this big issue. From the first day I arrived, people were telling me there's going to be another war. Every day they said tomorrow another war, tomorrow another war, and everybody's waiting for there to be another war. And yet, every day there's buildings going up. These beautiful million dollar, billion dollar buildings are going up. So to me, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you build this building next to a bombed out carcass of another building while there's all of these threats of war all around? And a lot of, a lot of Lebanese say this is, you know, yes, in some sense, it's the, you know, Lebanese strength and hope for the future. And on the other hand, people are saying, it's just like the crazy Lebanese, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, have a biz have business and make business no matter what. And so I, it's kind of interesting to 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 hear all the theories around around why why the city is continuing to be rebuilt and regenerated.